Avanti is launching new video series. Tune in every Monday for J problem solving and every Saturday for a class 10 video. We will also be releasing exciting science videos. So subscribe now so that you never miss an update from us. The idea of invisibility seems straight out of science fiction with Harry Potter, Star Trek, Mr India, Predator and even James Bond showing off invisible humans, vehicles, spaceships and what not. But the idea of invisibility is not a new one. It's as old as 1800s when H G Wells in his famous book The Invisible Man wrote about a man who could disappear out of sight. Scientists have since long observed the need to be invisible. Examples include the spotted coat of a leopard in the battle dress of a soldier, both attempts at hiding from the predators and staying alive. Let us see the greatest of camouflage to some of these pics now. How many toads can you see hiding in this picture? Can you see any animal here? Try to spot any living organism like a plant or an animal in this frame. But these tricks are useful only as long as the organism is stationary. So clearly there was a need for something more, something that can make humans invisible even when they're moving. And once again science came to the rescue. So in this video we're going to see all of our attempts at making an invisibility cloak. So first things first, what is a cloaking device? Cloaking of objects refers to anything that can make them disappear. And anything that does that is called a cloaking device. Note here that the object doesn't really disappear, but the vanishing is just an illusion. Now to learn how such an illusion is possible, we need to first learn how anything becomes visible to us in the first place. And the reason for this is light. Light hits an object, bounces off, reaches our eyes, and we see it as being visible. You may think that one way of making things invisible would be to stop light from interacting with it. But it's easier said than done. We have been able to create vacuum and take all the air out of space. We've also been able to make our space completely soundproof, but complete absence of light has never been achieved. So, our scientists have been trying not to make the light go away, but to play around it. One way of doing this can be by projecting the background on our eyes through what we call a projection cloak. A projection cloak consists of many tiny light emitters or LED display units. These units are tailored to create an image on our eyes of the background which would appear just as if the cloak and the wearer weren't there at all. But in practice this presents a phenomenal engineering challenge. It's not so hard to make a cloak which consists of tiny light emitters and camera as tiny sequence, but the real challenge comes when you have to give a different computation for all these cameras and emitters because the light that they project would have to change every second as the wearer is moving. So people have been looking for other ways of becoming invisible. One such successful demonstration was given by a professor and his graduate students at University of Rochester. The good thing about their setup is that it uses inexpensive, readily available lenses in a novel configuration. Their setup consists of four standard lenses and it allows anything to become invisible even as the viewer moves several degrees away from the optimal position. This setup has the advantage of working from a variety of different angles rather than just straight on vantage point. This cloak also works for the whole visible spectrum of light rather than some specific frequencies. However, the system has some glitches currently. As you can see, the cloaking doesn't work for all the angles. So if you were to walk around the object, the cloaked object would become visible to you. Also, the setup is really bulky, and if you were to carry it around with you all the time you wanted to achieve invisibility, it just isn't realistic. To achieve true invisibility, our scientists had to engineer a completely new product, something that would shield an object from view by controlling light. Typically, light moves fastest in vacuum, followed by gases, liquids, and then solids. A material's resistance to transmission of light at a particular frequency is measured by what we call refractive index. Now, while this number depends on light's frequency, it starts at one, which is the refractive index for vacuum, and it goes up. The higher the value, the more is the material's resistance to transmission of light, and more with the bending of light in that material. This can be seen when you see at a straw in a cup of water, and is the basis is to how we make lenses for eyeglasses, telescopes, etc. 
Now one way to make an invisibility device would be to make a device with a negative refractive index which means that light would bend in the opposite direction when entering this material. Nothing in nature fits into this category. And the properties of such a material were it to exist at all were predicted by Victor Vesselago in 1967. While Vesselago could imagine such a material in 1960s, he could not think of a way to make them. It took an additional 30 years before John Pentry published his papers in 1996, 1998 and 1999 in which he finally came up with a way to make such materials which he called metamaterials. So what is so special about metamaterials? We know that when light falls on any object, bounces off and reaches our eyes. But according to physics, if we make an object really, really, really small, then the light will bend around the object, making us see the background behind it and not the object itself. So therefore, to make a metamaterial, you have to have its components really, really, really small. And this is because for a metamaterial to work in the visible range of spectrum, we should have its components just 40 nanometers in size. And we're not quite there yet with nanotechnology. Yet another way can be by achieving near-perfect transparency. This idea eliminates the need of a cloaking device altogether. While this idea may seem completely bizarre, a number of animals have evolved to have completely or near-perfect transparent bodies. And in fact, many components on the human body itself are transparent. In fact, most of our body is opaque to visible light but is transparent to X-rays. Yes, that is the reason why X-rays are used to see fractures because they pass through the rest of our body. It might be possible to become transparent by bringing changes around in our body. This brings us to another physics conundrum. Can an invisible man see? Why or why not? What do you think? If you want to read more about invisibility or how we can become invisible, you have to learn about light, its interaction with matter, lenses, electromagnetic radiation, etc. We have detailed videos for all of these available on our app. The link for downloading our app is given in the description of this video. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. You can now access all of our videos from class 9 to 12 on our app. Download it now through link given in the description.